You know the famous lyric, I will play for gumbo, I will captain for gumbo. Well, hello from the Olo crew, and thanks for joining us. So our last adventure had us motoring out of the Florida Keys for a spectacular run on the Gulf of Mexico to Naples. Much of that 11-hour day is spent a couple of dozen miles offshore with no land in sight and on one continuous course, when we're not dodging crab pots. So separate from keeping constant watch, doing engine, and safety checks, and of course eating well, how do we pass the time as the nautical miles slip away? Well, you are about to find out. All right, so people often ask us, what do you do to fill the time on your long hauls? Well, we were listening to what, First Wave? It's a Friday and we listen to First Wave on Sirius XM because it's First Wave Friday. That's what we do. But, but sometimes we just sit here and interview each other. Do you want, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, we do. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? We often sit here and interview each other. Can I ask you a couple yeah, of questions? Yeah, you can ask me whatever you want. All right, here we go. So here we are leaving Marathon after a great winter. What was one of your favorite things that we experienced in Marathon? The sandbar. So there was a sandbar that was pretty close, pretty quick. It's about a 15 minute jaunt on the whaler. And it was one of Jasper's favorite things and it was one of our favorite things. And we spent a lot of time there. It's, it's remarkable. We have not had that kind of experience um, where really the weather, the tide, Pretty much, unless it was really nasty out, didn't really affect our ability to go there and uh, spend an hour or two uh, and let Jasper do some fishing. All right, you ready for another one? Yeah. All right, what is one of the major features you really enjoy about Olo, about this boat? The stabilizers. Because I'm very unstable. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, but, but the stabilizers, yeah, for sure. We. Um, we were going to the Bahamas with this boat with the previous version of stabilizers and we got to a point where I said we're, we're either upgrading these stabilizers or we're selling the boat because it was really taking away from our uh, our ability to use the boat the way we wanted to. Uh, and I'm telling you, once we did that upgrade, it really was a game changer and it really has made, it really makes our ride so much more pleasant and, and really particularly too um, Jasper gets really freaked out when the boat starts rocking and rolling and there's nothing worse for a doggy parent parents to have to go through than to watch their sweet dog have almost like a nervous breakdown so um, that alone was worth was worth it. I totally agree. And look at him. He is completely calm. He is completely relaxed. Not that this is a heavy sea, but every now and then we'll get a big beam wake from a far off boat that with the previous stabilizers would have really had us rolling. So it does make a huge difference. We're on the same page with that. Good. All right. Last question. You are wearing your Rayburn House shirt from Isla Mirada. Tell us about the Rayburn House and have you ever been there? Actually, um, you probably won't believe this, but I was a chef at the Rayburn House. Actually, I wasn't, I'm not allowed to be called a chef because I don't have any professional training, but I was a cook and I worked for Ma Rayburn. Um, I was off scene though, nobody saw me. Um, spent a lot of time there, it was really great. Um, boy, do we miss Bloodlines, we love that show. Um, now, this is just a great t-shirt. Um, there is really no such thing as the Rayburn House. It is a fictional place on a show that we really loved set on a beach that we visited quite a few years back and fell in love with it and really didn't know there were places like that in the Keys. Maybe we just didn't look hard enough. Um, so I have this Rayburn House um, complimentary uh, cook shirt. And if you guys love Bloodline too, let us know below. Okay, my turn because we love interviewing each other when we're underway. Um, so, you have interviewed a lot of people in your infamous career. Who had the biggest boat? Ha! That's a tough question because Denise Rich, I don't know if I ever interviewed Denise Rich, I did some stuff with her, but she had a 
what was her? She's a Christensen, a large Christensen super yacht. Who else? I'm trying to think. Well, Robin Mead from HLA. Of course. She, she and her wonderful husband have a nice boat. Who started them in boating? We did. That's right. And what about Miss Sunny Hostin? They've got a great little boat. Sunny Hostin and her husband, Manny. dear friends of ours, uh, Manny and, and Sunny, have a, a jet boat. Unless they've now upgraded. But she hasn't mentioned it if they have. We almost got them into big boating, too. I'm not sure who else. You know who I've never interviewed, but I, I'm a huge fan of and love the fact that he, I, I think he has a Pacific Mariner named Abracadabra. It's Steve Miller from the Steve Miller band. So it doesn't really answer your question, but hey, you I'm, know, sure, I'm sure there's somebody. Are you sure you're not forgetting anyone? Actually, I'm totally forgetting someone. Uh, Steven Spielberg. Is there a time that you see where you, you want to pull back for a couple of years so you can sail around the world or, or do something that uh, you're I've also passionate about? I've been there, done that. You know, I've taken, I've taken, I've had two stints of three years off where I didn't direct and I, 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 I hated it. <laughs> he has a 282 foot Ocean Co. super yacht that is magnificent. Eh, not so fast. As it happened, Steven Spielberg's yacht went on the market for around 160 million bucks the month after we filmed this, and it has since sold. You've seen it actually, right? We saw it in the water yeah. down in Fort Lauderdale when we were coming in at one point. Uh, and when I had to talk to Steven about something once, I was much more interested in talking to him, talking to him about yachting and boating than about uh, whatever the project is that he was there to promote. I got a boat head, that's what I do. So yes, Spielberg. He's a big yachtsman, worldly yachtsman. Yes. What's the name of the boat? Do you remember? The name of the boat is Seven Seas. Nice. You have been boating for a very long time. What uh, What was your first boat? Um, and who did you spend time on it with? Well, my first boat was a battery powered <laughs> boat about this big that I used to play with in the bathtub probably five years old and I didn't spend time on it with anybody. I single-handed <laughs> that boat in the bathtub. Did you have a yacht controller? It did not have a yacht controller but we it was way ahead of its time and had actually a, a sea keeper gyro stabilizer Oh, uh, in, it, sure. in case I had the water running from the tub. Only the best for little AJ. So who what was well the first boat that I was an owner of was our first boat, which was our 210 Sea Ray Sunday. It was a 2002. This was such a great boat. We had it up on the Hudson River. You know, we were weekend boaters. We would take it out and go up and down the Hudson River. We would anchor it right off of the beach and spend all of our weekends blasting around on it. And then we took our first trip on it down to New York City. I don't know what we were thinking. If I had known then what I know now, we probably wouldn't have done it. I'm glad we did because after that trip we realized, okay, if we're going to be into this destination boating thing, we need to move up. But yeah, that sun deck, man, that was that was awesome. I loved that boat. Yes, it was. Of all the upgrades that you would like to have on, on our boat, um, and if you could have one right now, what would it be? Huh. That's a really good question. One of the, we have a few things that are pretty high on our list. Um, an upgrade to our, our power grid, if you will, and getting an inverter where we could be out at anchor, especially when we're planning to go over to the Bahamas and power enough of our stuff without having to run the generator. Because this, our generator is out from the moment we leave the dock to the moment we pull up to the dock, mostly for refrigeration, air conditioning, and so on. So an inverter is pretty high on the list. Uh, gosh, we've done the major upgrades. We've really done the lion's share of, of the big items that we have wanted to do. So, is there? Am I missing something? Am I, is there not, how, how about my I, How about my hydraulic swim platform? Oh, the hydraulic Tim One's a hydraulic swim platform, and we never wanted one before on this boat. And he was asking about what I wanted, but uh, our friends with the three Bs, they're new to them. Ocean Alexander 70E that we made them buy. They have a hydraulic swim platform, which makes really easy work of lowering and, and retrieving their tender, and it's really just nice to have that teak beach. So it would be a cool feature. It's, you know, they're complicated pieces of gear, but it would be something that would be cool to have. We really wanted one on our last boat and couldn't do that. So I'm done. Those are my three questions. All right. Nice job. What a great little segment. Ask 
your boat buddy <laughs> a question. So part of part of getting ready to transition from boat to land is we have to figure out what to do with what we have left in the boat. Um, we have a refrigerator with a bunch of food in it, um, and I like to use everything up. Um, I hate throwing stuff out. Um, my mom and I have a reputation. We're like, eh, okay, maybe it's expired, but how does it taste? Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't win. But um, so we, I, I try to use everything up. So we had in our fridge what is called uh, the Holy Trinity. Um, don't get nuts about this, but so the Holy Trinity when it comes to the South is onion, celery, and green pepper. So I had that, and, and okay, you're gonna see this and you're gonna say that's not green pepper, but what is green pepper that has been left on the vine to ripen? It becomes red and orange. So that's what my pepper looks like. Anyway, I was thinking, you know, we're on this big stop. I wanna have some food for the rest of our journey. So I'm gonna make a classic gumbo. Why? Because I also had like about a cup and a half of flour left and I'm like, okay, I, I can use up my flour. I don't have to zip it in a Ziploc. So a classic gumbo is made with this terrific roux. You use about a heaping cup of flour to about two thirds cups of vegetable oil. Don't be grossed out. It, it, it's it's pretty awesome. But what you have to do is you put it in a skillet, you put it on a, a medium heat, maybe a little low, but you don't leave it alone. You gotta watch it for about 30 minutes and you stir it constantly, you never let it burn. That becomes the base of your really good gumbo. I also had shrimp in the freezer, maybe a little freezer burn, maybe not, but we're gonna eat it anyway because waste not, want not. Um, we had uh, one package of chicken breast, cut that up, you'll see that here. Um, so what, what we do is, I got my roux going. We got here, we had, a, we had our arrival cocktail, we had our sunset cocktail. So if I slur a little bit, forgive me. But we have, um, on my beautiful little induction, we're stirring up our roux right now. It's almost ready. It's supposed to get like almost a, a dark brown. Um, you don't want it to burn, but you want it, to, that's why you have to keep stirring it. And it, get, it, it gets this really tobacco-y kind of flavor. Um, it's pretty tasty, but it's weird when you taste it alone. So then I have my pan. I started to do a little bacon. So um, I don't have sausage, any of that stuff, but I have turkey bacon. So I threw some turkey bacon in here to get my pan seasoned up. I'm getting my pan seasoned up. Once that's seasoned up, I'm gonna add about five cups of chicken broth. Now I'm gonna add five cups of water. I use the better than bouillon chicken broth. Um, it's, pr it's really tasty, so you have to add a you know, a scoop per cup. Um, once that's done, and once that bacon gets all toasty and delicious and adds that real savory taste to it, I'm gonna throw my shrimp in and my chicken in. I'm gonna get my roux done. I'm gonna throw my roux in. I'm gonna get that all to a nice boil. And then I'm gonna throw my holy trinity in there. I didn't name it. That's what it's called. Um, and again, I know they're yellow and so once that's done, we're gonna have dinner for probably, cause it's, a, I have a fair amount of food here. We're gonna have dinner till our trip's over. We're also, and we're using up all of our stuff. So I'm very excited about it. And maybe I'm a little too talkative, but I've had a couple of little readers. But what you didn't say is what you're gonna do to this day or what you do to this day. You rue the day. Oh my God. <laughs> Kill you now. No. Not at all. I actually, that's one of the reasons why you're the captain. And I'm just a guy at the stove. All right, so I'm gonna, de I'm gonna deglaze this with a little of, listen, you know, a white wine deglaze, just, this is a, this is a fine, it's, it's okay, it's not super fancy, but just don't use garbage white wine, because it, it's still garbage when you put it in the pan. <laughs> Um, and, and maybe some people think this is, but I think it's good to deglaze. So I will deglaze this once it, 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 this gets to a certain temp. So when you do your gumbo, you gotta throw in some garlic, you gotta throw in some Cajun seasoning. You have to do that all based on, you know, your heat tolerance, things that you um, will enjoy or not enjoy. 
Um, we like it a little hot. Now, what I did, so normally I like to let my roux get a little brown on this, almost like a chocolatey brown, but we've had a long travel day. And the truth is, I think this is a, this is the thing about food. Um, yes, things are authentic and things taste like they do down wherever they're from or up wherever they're from. But, you know, the neighbors taste different than yours and the neighbors down there taste different than the neighbors from you. And everybody has their own little way of doing things. And I think that's the cool thing about cooking, the thing that makes me um, love it because this dish I will pro I will never make again because I'll never have these ingredients or if I do I'll have completely forgotten that I did this <laughs> because food is an experience when you eat the food um, this I just tasted it it is delicious it tastes like gumbo it's not it doesn't have as deep and rich a flavor if I had let that flour brown even more however um, it is excellent, and I wish y'all were here to taste it with me. I did a little white rice. So, yeah, you hear that spilling onto the floor? Um, I did a little white rice, so we will have the gumbo over the white rice. But you see, everything kind of came together nicely. Um, that, that roux that you throw in there with all that chicken broth, it thickens up. I'm going to pop this with a little bit more heat. Um, I'm gonna probably hit it for maybe two or three minutes on high just to get a boil going and to make sure that my um, That my holy trinity my celery my sweet onions my yellow onions uh, and my peppers Not green, but they were green once um, Are Just perfect. So all right, that's it. We're gonna have some dinner. So cook what you cook make what you make it'll be delicious because you did it and nobody else did many of you don't know this about me but i am <laughs> also an artist and the tv came on and we watch bob ross we love bob, we love ross. bob ross all right you ready so yeah so you know the famous lyric mm -hmm. i will play for gumbo i will captain for gumbo I'm so excited it's about It's going to be hot. Please be careful. Hot spicy or hot heat? No, hot heat. Heat. That is so good. What are you going to say? That, I mean, it's just so good. What are you going to say, though? You wouldn't say it was bad. I would say you rue the day. Yeah, well, you rue the day if you say it was bad. Oh, my God. I, I was delicious. It's I, delicious. The chicken is cooked perfectly. Wow. How does the... Mm, and the spice... It's not too hot, but it's... I've been to New Orleans a bunch, as as you know. That's this is some authentic... Well, listen... This is some authentic shit, I'm yeah, just going to say. It. Yeah, and here's the thing. Wow, I, I, it's good. And I was thinking about this when I was making this. Like, uh, we you all... You have to film me eating, because I... No, it's okay. Um, you want me to film Bob painting? Um, I, I just want to say this. Okay. Film me eating while you say I will you film me say. eating. I, I will say this. Don't ever let anybody tell you you're not a good cook. Food belongs to everybody. Yes, there are certain chefs and, and masters who have done amazing stuff. However, we all have different taste buds. We all experience things differently. We all cook with what we have. And I really believe, and I know this is probably like a total tangent, but we all create amazing things in our kitchens. My grandmother, my grandma McFadden, like she was a rock star in the kitchen. I, I, you know. There are so many things she created that I could never reproduce. And that is what this is. It's gumbo, yes. If somebody wants to nail me down and say it's not a classic gumbo, it's like, okay, it's not. It's what I had in my fridge. It's Olo gumbo. It's Olo gumbo. So one love, listen, one heart. One love, one heart. You cook, you cook, you you cook, you eat, you enjoy. That's all that matters. And that's it. I'm done. I've had too much to drink. Bye-bye. I was filming him. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, we appreciate the like and would love to have you subscribe. And if you'll whack that notification bell, 
you won't miss a moment of the continuing adventures of Olo. Cheers. <laughs>